نزلتها فتبسمت فرم الفؤاد بحبها This is a noble news production. It is a historiography of the 187 years old legendary Mala Abu Karim's Jumat Mosque, one of the most famous mosques in the length and breadth of Zazzal Emirates. The program will also focus on complementing His Highness Mala Ahmed Bamali's noble initiative to reconstruct a befitting Mala Abu Karim's Jumat Mosque an important artifact of the Zazzo Emirates heritage. Join us as we delve into the narrative of this iconic mosque's 187-year journey and ambitious plans for its reconstruction. The noble plan to reconstruct Mahalan Abdul Karim Zuma at most started after the event of the 11th of August 2023. A tragedy struck as sections of the historic Mahalan Abdul Karim Zuma at most collapsed during Asr prayers, claiming lives and injuring scores. Situated in the front of the Zazo Emir's palace, this 187-year-old mosque stood as a testament to time until its sudden demise. Constructed in 1837 under the reign of Marlon Abdul Karim Ibn Abbas, the third emir of Zazo, this mosque bore witness to centuries of Islamic and cultural heritage of Zazo, making it 186 years old by 2023 when the mosque collapsed. As usual, in the nature of accidents, the incident was unforeseen and unanticipated, therefore unprepared for the eventuality. Its collapse during prayers was a stark reminder of the fragility of age structures, sparking investigations into its demise. This is the rubble of the old Marlon Abdul Karim Jumat Mosque. The old mosque is gone. The fact is, it was so unique because it was built by Babangwani from Adobe and it lived for almost two centuries, representing unique Islamic and cultural art of Zazo in particular and Northern Nigeria in general. Until its recent demolition, it was said to be the oldest mosque existing in Zazo Emirates. It was 187 years old cultural heritage flattened in a moment. This must arouse emotions, albeit sentiments towards the loss of the heritage. Don't go away. We have much more to come. We will take them step by step, one by one, critically and objectively. Come along. The collapse of a building. A building collapse is a sudden structural failing, partially or entirely, of a building destroying properties and threatening the health of the people or costing human life. Many reasons, such as construction activities, structural failure, explosion, or natural forces like earthquakes, floods, or fire may be the cause of a building collapse. When internal load-bearing structural elements fail, a building will collapse into itself and exterior walls into the falling structure the cause of the collapse of Malan Abdul Karim Juma at Mosque. After the collapse of Malan Abdul Karim Juma at Mosque, local authorities, including the Emirate Council, Amadou Bella University, the Nigerian Institute of Architects, Kaduna State Government, and many other experts and professional bodies launched investigations to determine the cause of the collapse. In particular, Amadou Bello University deployed a five-member team comprising architects, structural engineers, and builders to investigate the collapse of the ancient mosque of Zazzao. The experts were raised to use the teaching equipment of the civil engineering department of the university to thoroughly investigate the real causes for the collapse of Marla Abu Karib Juma at Mosque. On the other hand, the Nigerian Institute of Architects 
Arts also constituted a committee comprising of its senior members drawn from the academia and government agencies to investigate the factors that led to the collapse of the Zaza Mosque. The preliminary findings from the multiple investigations indicated that the building had experienced wear and tear, a common occurrence in aged structures. The findings indicated that the recent renovations and expansions of the mosque introduced destabilization factors. What this meant was that the old and modern concrete structures settled differently, causing pressure that the old structure could not withstand, which ultimately resulted in the interior collapse. Thus, unanimously, the experts separately and in unison recommended the entire area of the Malan Abu Karim Juma Atmos that collapse should be sealed off for safety purposes. It was generally agreed that the urgent action should be taken to prevent further loss of life and to protect the populace from the dangers posed by the hazardous infrastructure. Mala Ahmed Nuhubamali initiated decisive action. From the inception of ascending the throne of Zazzo, Mala Ahmed Nuhubamali has startling transformation of Zazzo Emirate into modernity. He gave facelift by renovating and transforming many areas. He also initiated many other developments such as the History and Documentation Center, the Palace Clinic, Event Pavilion, and the Botanical Garden in his domain. He also made some structural reforms of the ancient dynasty. Therefore, the reconstruction of the mosque was expected by many. Thus, as the dust of the collapse settled, the Emir of Zazo, Mala Ahmed Nubamali, initiated decisive actions. Following expert counsel, the mosque was first sealed off and later ultimately demolished to pave way for the grand reconstruction of the mosque. Under the astute leadership of His Highness, the Emir of Zazo, Mala Ahmed Nubamali, a high powered technical committee of experts was constituted. It was chaired by Muhammadu Namadi Sambu, a professional architect, a Zazo Emirate title holder who is the subdonor of Zazo and a one-term vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The Emir of Zazo took another step in constituting a fundraising committee under the chairmanship of another illustrious son of Zazo, Marlon Nasser Ahmed El Rufai, the former governor of Kaduna State, an astute politician, a sagacious administrator, and outstanding goal getter. The ambitious project aimed to raise 30 billion naira for the construction of the new Mala Abu Karim Juma at Mosque. So far, Al Haji Abdus Samad Rabiu, the chairman of Bua Groups, as the chief launcher during the first fundraising occasion at the Shehu Yaradwa Center, Abuja, in October 2023, donated the sum of 2 billion naira while other dignitaries at the launching occasion were able to generate 1 billion naira. Thus, the launching committee in Abuja was able to realize the sum of 3 billion naira. Donations are still ongoing. Doors for the donation are still open and donations are still expected from well-spirited individuals for the sake of Allah so as to successfully carry out this laudable mosque reconstruction project. Don't go away. We have much more to come. We will take them step by step, one by one, critically and objectively. Come along. <laughs> Amazingly, while the gesture of His Highness Mala Ahmed Nuhubamali, the Emir of Zazzo, was commended by many well-meaning Muslim Ummah and indeed Nigerians across all divides, particularly those who saw the Emir's action as positive effort to safeguard the lives and properties of worshippers in the mosque, unfortunately, his Highness' actions also stirred controversy among many sections and groups of the people of Zazo. 
Critics questioned demolition, advocating for the preservation of the historic structure. Allegations of ulterior motives further clouded the narrative, with some perceiving the AMS actions as a slight to the most original builder, Marlon Abdul Karim Ibn Abbas. To them, the mosque should have been preserved by all means and at all costs, and should have been the priority rather than destroying the ancient historic relic. This controversy underscores the deep-seated divisions within the Zozo Emri, rooted in the centuries-old rivalries between the Fulani and Zagazagi dynasties. Understanding these complexities is crucial in navigating the intricacies of Zozo history and heritage. One of the alleged animosities was the pronouncement attributed to the Emir that the mosque was originally the brainchild of Mala Musa, his paternal ancestral lineage and the founder of the Malawa dynasty. The question is why all the contentions and controversies over the intention of providing Zazo Emery with a befitting modern central Juma at mosque? The answer is simple. <laughs> Let me answer this question in this way. Although I live in Zaria since 1984, I was not aware of the sharp classification of the people of Zazo until when I took Project Zulu a research work on the history of Zululand and its people. I soon discovered the sharp divides of the Fulani and Zagezegi dynasties. Amazingly, the Fulani dynasty of Zazo is equally sharply divided into four ruling houses of Zazo, making up of Malawa, Bereberi, Kasinawa, and Sulubawa. With the lineages of the Ostet Zagezegi dynasty, often referred to as the Habe rulers, this makes up five groupings sharply divided in Zazo. The implication of this divide is very important in many matters concerning the history of Zazo and must be taken into cognizance in this narrative. Each time my subject is the history of a people, I draw inspiration from the words of Waziri Junaidu of Sokoto's timeless wisdom. He said, Whoever does not inform his children of his grandparents has destroyed his child, marred his descender, and injured his offspring the day he died. Whoever does not make use of his ancestry has modeled his reason. Whoever is unconcerned with his lineage has lost his mind. Whoever neglects his origin, his stupidity has become critical. Whoever is unaware of his ancestry, his incompetence has become immense. Whoever is ignorant of his roots, his intellect has vanished. Whoever does not know his place of origin, his honor has collapsed. Wazili Junaidu of Sokoto. Wazili Junaidu emphasizes the importance of ancestral knowledge. Indeed, understanding our past is vital in shaping our present and future. Each time I see this quote, the words of Marcus Garvey hits me hard. He said, a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. I am going into all these because of the volatility, cantacarious, and touchy aspect of how the history of Zazo can be. I believe that there are a lot of distortions and misconceptions of the history of Zazo, just as I found in the history of Zulu. It is not surprising because the history of a people, especially the minorities like Zuri people or a people as sharply divided as the Zazo people evokes great passion. Because of this great passion, it is always astonishing how historical interpretations always assume political undertones. In practical terms, in Zaria, I found out that each of the five groups I listed always have one or two things that underscore their importance as a people, which must be captured, while other groups feel in certain sort will undermine their significance. 
The trend signifies how politics permit scholarship. It is true that the production of knowledge is a political issue laden with heavy dosages of value judgments. <laughs> Rightly or wrongly, these divides are responsible for these contentions. In this journey, we will take a critical appraisal of these contentions in this historiography of the 187 years old Mala Abu Karim Jumat Mosque, the oldest mosque in Zazo Emirate. Don't go away. We have much more to come. We will take them step by step, one by one, critically and objectively. Come along. We started this quest by finding out whether there have been precedents for mosque demolition and innovation in Islamic history. Is there established precedence of building mosques in the vicinity of palaces? In order to answer these questions, we studied the founder of the Fulani Jihad, the Amirul Muminun, Sheikh Usman Danfodio's laid down precedents and directives in regards to the constructions of mosques within the caliphate. How many mosques had Danfodio built himself? Are they still functional? In what state? How many of these mosques were renovated, demolished, and reconstructed? We equally made a comparative study of Danfodio's mosque construction with the Caliphate and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this regard. We also took a look into the number of times the most important mosque in the world, the Baitullah, the House of God, also known as al Kaaba, Al-Musharrafa, and Al-Masjid Al-Haram, the holiest site in Islam, was renovated, demolished, and reconstructed. We also drew lessons from the renovation of the Masjid Al-Nabawi, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's mosque. However, before going into all this, we took a look into His Highness Mala Ahmad Nuba Mali, the scion of Mala Musa, the first emir of Zazzo's bold steps taken to revive Mala Musa's Zazzo Jihad in our modern times. Remember, Mala Ahmad Nuba Mali ascended the throne of Zazzo 100 years after the last Bamali. We have dispelled the misconception of the word Jihad in this series. We also undertook the historiography of the 187 years old Malan Abdul Karim Jumat Mosque. No doubt, Malan Abdul Karim Jumat Mosque is one of Zazzo's heritage's greatest artifacts. It was a cultural heritage passed from generation to generation, including architectural, artistic expressions, values, and the ways of living developed by the people over the years. Through a variety of sources, we presented answers to the controversies surrounding the demolition and reconstruction of Malan Abu Karim's Jumat Mosque. There is much more. Of course, this will be done in segments. Don't go away. We will take this step by step, one by one, critically and objectively. Come along. It is a Noble News production. Noble News is dedicated to research and dissemination of factual, accurate and unbiased online media in all formats, with a reputation of truth and balance. This is where we draw the cutting for this introductory production on the series, the historiography of Marlon Abdul Karim Jumat Mosque, only on Noble News. Keep your day with Noble News, truth and balance. I remain U.S. Machika. <laughs> Thank you.